Uviak Indi. My name is Corrine Sanchez, and I'm the director of Te Women United, a Native women's organization based here in Española, New Mexico. So Española is a central point for our community's gathering. Um, we started our organization 23 years ago to really empower Tewa um, speaking communities, in particular Tewa women, um, to come together and find strength and voice within one another um, to, to make change, to make positive change within their families and their community. We had a really deep discussion about where we wanted to locate our organization and our work, um, and we chose this area because it historically um, has been a gathering place for the Tewa communities to come together when they had issues um, that needed the involvement of all the community uh, in, around this area. And so it had that base of really being a political place where people gathered. And it's also a place that's neutral for our tribal communities to come together to talk about issues that were affecting them. And so we provide um, multiple services um, through our organization. So as uh, Te Women United, as we were organizing, we um, were trying to incorporate a lot of our tribal values and our beliefs. So it took a lot of translations of how we think in our native way, with our words, with our, our the way we say the blessings, and then how does that translate into the American world of government, or of uh, political or of organizational developments. And so in developing that model of how do we, how does two sides become one, we develop the science into our organizational development with the two sides being the Native American way of thinking or our tribal way of thinking and then the Euro American way of thinking and then having the two together as the butterfly wings to have mobility and movement so that when we would be fluid in one, we could go into the other and then come back into ourselves. And if things got tough in our communities because of the um, deliberate intent of holding women back, we could flow into the other Euro American way, find our support, find our circles, find our strength, and then get into our spiritual self and then come back in. That way you're not giving up on one or the other. You're not held down. You're, you're, you have the fluidity to be yourself in both worlds. The work that we do, I feel, is like a river. So it's a it's a converging of these different streams of um, places of focus that impact our lives. So we have four focus areas. One is our sexual violence and trauma focused work. The other is our environmental justice and environmental health work. Um, another is our indigenous women's health and reproductive justice, which is our doula program and our teen pregnancy prevention program and really talking about healthy sexuality and healthy development. Um, the other is our women's leadership and economic freedom work. Um, and then a stream that flows through all of that and a spirit of connection is our circle of grandmothers who are really our wisdom holders that hold our knowledge to our ancient ways that hold our ties to our um, core values um, that we based our organization on. Every corn stalk has, has, produces two corns. And I never knew that, that it produces two corns because that's your partner, your mate, the person who's supposed to help you as you move from your parents to support you and love you and guide you. And then at the top of the corn is the silk. And then at the top of the corn stalk is the pollen. And the pollen is the regeneration, the fertilization. And how we took that is not just the fertilization to go on and create life, which is also one of the things, but also to share your stories, share your knowledge, find the person you are and realize that the, the lessons that you have to teach are really important and that you're valued and you're wanted to be heard. And I think when I heard that, how closely related to the corn we are, the way we pray with the corn, the way that we talk about corn mother, um, really sunk deeper into me and I really felt like it was a really sweet gift to be able to share that with my daughter who's now five. 
So our group is intergenerational, which we feel is important because it honors our traditional and cultural ways of learning from our elders and um, elders teaching young and, the, and also learning from the young people. So sometimes we have grandmothers and their grandsons in our group together, which I think is a really beautiful thing to see. Our group is really creative, and so we use our creative voices uh, as a way to, to share the issues with our surrounding communities. Through the lens of graffiti, I was able to start kind of applying art as an as a instrument for activism within the community. It's the fact that there are so many environmental issues present in northern New Mexico that if you're going to be an activist, I mean, it's almost natural for you to get involved in these things. I mean, I could be trying to, uh, you know, protest who's ever running for president, but that doesn't affect me as much as uh, what's going on in my environment right here, right now, because what we fight for today is what we're going to, is going to be the legacy of our children. So, you know, um, I guess to answer that simply, we're in environmental activism. I'm in environmental activism because our environment needs us right now. And I kind of got involved with the environmental justice group about three years ago as a volunteer along with my son. And uh, that work really was about uh, getting more informed about uh, environmental risks that affect uh, the land, air, and water here in Española. Also, it's, uh, I think, inspired me to kind of reconnect with uh, with Mother Earth and have like a newfound respect for that. So one of our campaigns that we've been working on for a couple years now is we realized that through our environmental health and justice work around nuclear weapons contamination that a lot of the toxins coming that we're downwind and downstream of um, really impact our reproductive health. We found that current U.S. radiation exposure regulations are based on a model called Reference Man, which is a 150-pound adult white male. And that's, it's, it's a standard developed around when the nuclear age started. So we feel like it's really just a matter of justice that uh, current health standards are protecting those most vulnerable. And that's what we want to try to raise awareness for and get policy changed around. It's important that people in the community are reconnecting with the land in a lot of different ways because when you have that connection to the land then it frees up a lot of the anxiety that we have on our dependency on outside sources for survival. When we can facilitate that reconnection and make people aware of what resources they do have and how empowering that is to realize that like we have all the knowledge we need to survive and to help each other survive then it's an easy way to get people to come together um, around different issues and it's in these settings that, that people really start to talk and, and learn from each other also. You know, there's not that many settings where people can come together and just dialogue anymore, which is also a traditional way of learning and empowering ourselves through education. Um, we've kind of become trained to, to learn through institutional learning, but before we learned orally. And I think that tradition is still happening today. It's just in different spaces. As Table Women United, we've always had it at the core that we are addressing violence against women and girls in our community and against Mother Earth. I think that's the root of the work of Table Women United, is to really look at that oppression, look at that trauma, and look at how we can move through it, heal from it, learn from it, grow from it, um, and sprout a, a space where we're protecting our children. And I think a lot of us who are survivors of any type of violence or any type of oppression, you know, we need to really look, at, look deep inside and, and know that we have the potential and others just to recognize that that potential exists and is there and we need to um, embrace and that we need to bring others up along that same path um, because that's how we really do 
transform and change and make a, a difference in our communities. Part of that process, um, we gave some blessings and so our integration of our activism, our organizing, all of those come with those pieces of prayer, of laying respect, of coming together in relationship um, to change systems, to change hearts, um, to change our community. Being in the doula program, I have um, enjoyed a lot of the, the family nights. And with the family nights, I have learned uh, CPR training, um, infant massage training that has brought me really close with my daughter. Taking all these classes, it has empowered me to be aware of how to help my daughter and be, it has given me a lot of strength to speak up and to also be proud of who I am. I'm happy to to show that to my daughter that it is to be strong just like I am. I'm thoroughly blessed that I was um, brought to this organization and I feel that it was um, definitely an answer to my prayers because I was at a point that I just did not know what I was going to do and where I was going to go and becoming a, you know a mother for the first time I definitely wanted a safe place and um, the support and um, the love that you get from TWU is just you, it's very rare. What we're trying to teach people is that there is hope amidst all this chaos and and challenges that we face there's also very strong tools at our disposal. There's libraries of information in our elders and in our spiritual leaders that we can draw from to propel us forward into this new era. Uh, I think if we hold true to our values that were passed down to us, I think we really can get through this time and, and uh, hopefully create a better future for these kids and you know give them the tools that they need so that they can become leaders in the future and we talk about exponential growth at Te Women United of trauma, but it's also exponential growth of the power of people. So 10 by 10 by 10 means that you're impacting that 10, but that 10 is gonna go out and impact 10 more, and those 10 are gonna impact 10 more, and so it grows. Um, so if there's three people in a circle, if there's two people in a circle, you still have that circle, you still have that meeting, um, because the healing and the change is still gonna occur on that level, even as you had a thousand people in a room. Um, so we, we take that core philosophy of not getting stuck on the numbers. Rural organizing is challenging in that we don't have the resources or the transportation issues and all of these other things that we're challenged with. Um, but I think a piece that has been really powerful for rural organizing is that we have the power of relationship. We have the power of creating family among um, workers, among um, community members, among organizations. It's in our relationship to one another um, and our responsibility for one another that we really can carry forward uh, in a good and positive and healthy way.